Hey everybody, Metal Fro here, back with another video review. This time, instead of covering a CD, I'm covering a concert, or more to the point, two concerts. The Rex Carroll Band, and also Unrest in the Midwest. So, I got the chance to see the Rex Carroll Band on Friday, June 25th, uh, in Keokuk, Iowa, the home base for Retroactive Records, where the Rex Carroll Band's current CD, that was then, this is now, uh, has come out on and we got a chance to see the Rex Carroll Band play live at a local establishment called L Trains and it was a great show. Um, Rex was in fine form guitar wise and uh, he looked like he was having fun, he was into it, he was singing well, the equipment was working well and everything seemed like it was uh, was really clicking. Um, having been unfamiliar with the Rex Carroll Band's material up to that point uh, I gotta say I was really impressed both with the quality of the songwriting uh, I really feel like Rex's voice is perfect for that style and uh, he really pulls it off and bassist Antonio wow um, that that guy can play I mean really he impressed me quite a bit you know there's not too many bass players that really impress me all that much but I gotta tell you He's one of those guys that makes the bass guitar an instrument and isn't just part of the rhythm section. Uh, so hats off to Antonio for impressing me and for, you know, just really taking bass guitar to the next level because I think there are more more bass players that need to do that. Um, but uh, it was an awesome show and uh, it was a full set. And then afterwards, um, well, I should say... Doug George from Retroactive Bombworks Records actually covered on drums for Rex and Antonio because their regular drummer couldn't come down uh, because of some medical issue that his wife had. So obviously he was at home uh, or he was with her. So Doug covered and um, he only had like a week to prepare. He went up to Chicago to practice with Rex and Antonio for like a day and then came back and practiced the songs and he really did a great job. I, I think he sounded fantastic and I think he kept up and uh, I, I really think he just did a great job. And anyway, we went down, my friend uh, Rob and I, and then Rex and Antonio and Doug all walked down to another place uh, a few blocks down where uh, a couple of Doug's local bandmates were at. and. Uh, after some coaxing, Rex got up and actually played again uh, on an acoustic guitar and cranked out another five or six songs. And uh, it was amazing, uh, you know, just seeing him kind of in a stripped down acoustic, off the cuff type of performance. You know, it, it felt like something out of a movie because you never see that kind of thing. And so it was a real magical experience, I think. The next day, Unrest in the Midwest was fantastic. Um, that was a, another truly magical experience. Definitely one of the best concert experiences I've had in a long time. Um, <clears throat> there were uh, basically the schedule was 12 bands, and they had them divided into four sets of three. And so you'd have a set of three bands that would play, each get about 30 minutes or so, and then a short break for setup and takedown. And um, it started off really well. The The first band and the greatest of these, they played and they were pretty impressive. Um, you know, had a really good set and just really played well. And then Skies came on. They did pretty good. They had some technical difficulties during their set. Their bass rig had some issues and so they, they didn't actually get to play as many songs as they normally would have, but they did pretty well um, otherwise. And then um, another band came on called Leper. And this was a major change in direction. They were a more of a gothic uh, industrial rock type of band. And uh, they it was two guys. And then they had a, a laptop and a sequencer that provided the drum tracks and the keyboard tracks. And they had some problems with that interfacing with the soundboard. And so some songs, you had keyboard and drums. On other songs, you only heard the drums. Or on some songs, you only heard the keyboard. Um, you only heard the drums on the last song that they played, which actually worked quite well because it fit the the kind of atmosphere the song had, and it really 
kind of gave it a real stark minimalist feel to it, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, after that, then it was um, the next three bands were Copernicus, uh, and they played kind of a <clears throat> kind of a basic deathcore style, a lot of breakdowns, you know, fairly heavy, but um, nothing that you know we haven't heard before. But I think they did a good job; they played well. And then um, we heard FBS, uh, who played really really good set of punk rock, and um, hats off to those guys. They had a lot of energy. And uh, they really, they really gave their all. And I really liked the fact that they included, um, you know, a lot of material in their set. And then closing out the second set was Borders from Italy. And those guys totally impressed me. The fact that they flew all the way out from Italy to do Unrest and like three or four other gigs they had booked was just completely blew me away. And I. I, you know, I sat there, I stood there in awe thinking, okay, why didn't I buy their CD? Why haven't I bought it yet? Because their stuff was amazing. And so, of course, I bought their CD and now I've been listening to it, you know, pretty much nonstop. Um, but fantastic kind of classic metal meets thrash metal sound. Uh, borders on power metal here in places, but it's real melodic and good stuff. Uh, they, they really, really were tight and played well. Um, then after a, a bit of a meal break, I guess you can say, <clears throat> the third set was the three bands that were on the Drop in the Bomb tour. Um, the set was opened by A Hero Remains, who came on uh, kind of midway through the tour when I Built the Cross dropped out due to some issues with their visa, uh, since they're from Canada. And I had seen A Hero Remains and the other two bands in Omaha about a week and a half before, and I thought they did even better... Um, at unrest than I than they did at Omaha when I saw them, and uh, I really think they did a great job. They played a really good set. They were energetic and uh, really really sounded good. And then Divulgence came on, and those guys, man, those guys are awesome. Um, I really like their sound. It's kind of a blackened thrash and real progressive and technical, and uh, they sounded awesome in that venue because you could actually hear what was going on. And of course, I always wear earplugs because then you get through the noise and you can you get a little bit better definition of the the music. But I really think they sounded fantastic. And uh, of course, they closed their set with a cover of of Megadeth's uh, P Cells, which sounded awesome. And then A Hill to Die Upon was incredible. Um, <clears throat> they had some mic issues. There were some spots where there weren't weren't any vocals. But other than that, they sounded fantastic. They were tight. You know, the, the playing was good, they were energetic, and they really put on a good show. Uh, and then the last set uh, started out with uh, Kidnap the Sun, a relatively new band. Kind of a modern rock meets screamo with a lot of keyboards, and you know the vocalist kind of switched back and forth between a traditional vocal and an auto-tuned vocal. Um, I like their stuff. Personally, I think the vocalist makes a little bit too much use of the auto-tuner. And uh, about halfway through their set, actually, the auto-tune vocals, you couldn't hardly hear them. So I think there was a problem with the, with the chord or the interface there. But, um, but I think overall they were fun and, you know, they played well. They had good energy. Uh, and then after them was Rex Carroll Band, which was awesome again. Uh, I think Rex was even tighter and the group was, they played even better, I think, on Saturday night than they did on Friday night and just sounded fantastic. Rex was into it. You could see, you know, in his smiles and everything that he was really enjoying himself, and I just really think it was a great, uh, great set. Um, then a bit of a surprise, um, one of the bands that was touring with FBS called Crush the Enemy kind of got slotted in toward the end, and uh, they played a pretty good set. It was uh, kind of an old-school hardcore punk feel. Um, someone said they sounded like Stormtroopers of Death, and I don't quite agree with that assessment, but I thought it was a pretty good, pretty good sound. And then, of course, Grave Robber. They took the stage and absolutely just made it their own. I mean, it was an incredible set. They played a whole bunch of great songs, including a couple of my favorites, and I really think they just, they just owned it. Even with all the technical difficulties and problems with the microphones that they had, they really put on a great show. This is Metal Fro. Thanks for watching this video review, and we'll see you next time.